Well, that's it. Week five is tomorrow for the Philadelphia Eagles going into L.A. The first the L.A. Rams at 2-2. Two and two. The Eagles are 4-0. and oh, And a lot of questions regarding both rosters and uh, the injuries on both sides. Three or four things I have to discuss when it regards to the defense of what's going to happen on Sunday and going forward. I think this is really important. Uh, so let's get into it. Yo, yo, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's enjoying their weekend and about to enjoy, hopefully, a good game on Sunday against the L.A. Rams. The Eagles fans are traveling to L.A. We're going to take over that stadium. It's going to be like a home game for us. I think we all know this. Uh, but I want to go over the injury report for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is from Thursday, but things have changed slightly a little bit going into the weekend. Uh, so, Sidney Brown is going to be out with a hamstring injury. He's dealt with this hamstring the past couple weeks. Uh, Justin Evans will take over the safety spot. And I think Justin Evans has became a, a very good, solid safety for us. Okay. A nice veteran there. Um, Terrell Edmonds just cannot be in the game. <laughs> I think he's one of the, I think he's our, the worst safety we have right now. Um, I thought he would play better this year. Maybe he will down the line. I don't know. I think his coverage, I think when he peels off and covers, I think it's bad. You know, he had a penalty, a helmet to helmet penalty last week and couldn't catch an easy, an easy interception that the defense literally gave to him in his hands or the offense. I'd say the defense, you know, deflected the ball and it came down so slow and couldn't get it. So I haven't really been a fan of, uh, of, of Edmonds this year. Um, you know, but Justin Evans, not the best player, not a bad player. I think he's a nice, solid veteran safety for us that really shores up the back end. So we have some depth at that position with Terrell Edmonds will be the third safety going into this game. Sidney Brown, you know, really tried this week to come back, but you know, I don't know if he re-aggravated the hamstring. Hopefully not. I didn't hear that he did, uh, but I know they've been trying to cross train Sidney Brown this week into the nickel spot as well. So I think they're really trying to turn Sidney Brown into a hybrid player that plays safety and in inside corner, which would be great because I think that's what we badly need for this defense uh, for someone to play multiple positions. And, you know, if somebody goes down, you know, you won't miss a heartbeat with this defense and where it goes. Um, Fletcher Cox is going to be out just for this game. You know, we're losing Fletcher Cox. We're losing Marlon Tupalutu with the triceps injury. So you're down a couple defensive tackles this week. Uh, Fletch, unfortunately, had the epidermal shot in his spine. So he had some back issues this week, but I think he'll be fine. They only said he was going to be out one game. Uh, so he'll be back next week. Definitely a loss. Uh, the question is, who's going to play uh, next to, you know, uh, Jalen Carter? That's going to be, you know, the question uh, going into really into tomorrow. So we'll see what happens happens with that which we'll get into a little bit later in this video um wide receiver Britton Covey obviously obviously had the concussion um you know uh didn't know what was going to happen here with Britton Covey this week because I think with I don't know if it's the league when it comes to concussion protocol because if you get a concussion in a game it seems like you miss the next game but uh Britton Covey had a full practice um he was limited to full on Friday and there is some optimism that he will uh you know, play on Sunday. Britton Covey has done a fantastic job. I think he's a top two punt returner right now. I think he's averaging like 15 to 18.8 yards per carry, uh, which is awesome. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? I think Covey has played well. I think the special teams has gotten so much better. I'm just waiting for that moment to for Britton Covey to just run one back for the team, you know, and just get a touchdown for us. I think that moment is coming sooner or later. And, you know, I'm surprised. I eat my own words on Britton Covey and, um, you know, has been, been playing good the past few weeks and, uh, the special teams has really turned around. Um, we don't really get kick returns too much. Most of them are, are really, you know, uh, are going into the end zone at this point. So, um, you know, Quez will be back. Obviously, he's a full go, and most likely it will be Boston Scott, Quez Watkins at the kick return. Most likely, Devin Allen is probably not going to get a shot. I highly doubt it. They would have to move him up to the active roster for a second time, which I don't think they have done yet. Um, and obviously, the IR reserve, you know, Sean Bradley's out. Nicobe Dean will come back in a couple weeks. Roderick Johnson's out. Avante Max out for the year. Zach McPherson out for the year. Now, the questions regarding Cooper Cup. Is he playing Sunday? Well, he is playing Sunday. Now, Sean McVay is unsure how the hamstring is going to hold up because really the story with Cooper Cup was at the end of August, he had a hamstring injury. Then he re then he re aggravated it. Um, and then uh, they put him on IR, which on IR, you're out for about four weeks. 
um, or more than that. Uh, so Cup was designated to return this week. Now, with Puka Nuka, I can't say his name right, so please just bear with me here. Um, I think they're only playing Cooper Cup because he's going to be um, a decoy in this offense for the Rams. I feel like they only have him in there. I don't think he's 100%. I don't even think he's 85%. Uh, to play in this game. I think he's about 80 to 78%, like full go, full healthy, okay? Um, we're going to be able to tell, and even if Cup you know, only plays some amount of plays and maybe he starts getting in pain again, maybe his hamstring starts to, you know, hurt. I, I don't know, um, but I feel like he's more of a decoy, and as long as he gets attention on the field, it's going to help the rest of the offense, so really I just think he's just just there for show. Um, and just depending, we'll see how healthy he looks and how many yards he gets in this game. But I think that's one of the big matchups I'm kind of worried about going into this game. When I talk about the defense, and I think this will be the next discussion right now, um, is are they moving Bradley Roby into the nickel spot this week? He had a lot of reps at that position this week. Um, I saw that he was at the Phillies game uh, yesterday, which, which was pretty, or the other day, or a couple days ago, which was pretty cool. Um, and I don't know what they're doing. They haven't said anything. They're not going to say anything because they, they want to keep the Rams off track with what the Eagles are doing defensively. But it's either Bradbury's playing the inside for one more game and Josh Job will take the outside or Bradley Roby will start at the nickel spot this week and I or tomorrow. And I really hope he does. Um, we badly need uh, Roby to play well. And I, and I really hope he does. Um, you know, so <laughs> that's, that's going to make the difference because Cooper Cup is going to line up all over the place or Puka Nuka. I think one of those two, somebody's moving in the slot. I don't keep their key. I don't think they're keeping both guys on the outside. I think they're going to try to finagle the Eagles a little bit. Um, you know, and Bradbury not saying he's bad on the inside, but eh, he hasn't really played well there. And I, you know, he's done okay at times, but he's an outside guy. We all know this, you know, he was cross trained in training camp to play inside because I think, you know, they figured that Avante Max wasn't going to stay healthy this year he was already hurt twice and he had the pectoral and he was out the rest of the year so this decide to put you know you had to move your secondary around a little bit since Sidney Brown is out for this game you know I know Justin Evans has played the nickel spot but they're not moving him there I feel like you really need you you really really need Justin Evans at that backside safety spot you really need him there for this whole entire game because I think we we really lacked uh you know and Terrell Edmonds is is not playing well right now so uh, Evans needs to take that spot so we're going to see what happens um, if he's playing. And if it's up to me right now, I think Roby is going to play. Another side of me thinks that the Eagles may have rushed him this week and he has to learn all the terms. How much does he really have to learn terminology-wise in a few days? I mean, really half a, a three-quarters of a week of practice. I think he's done enough. I think he's learned enough. I don't see why it would it would take a whole week, you know, for him not to play in a game, you know, to practice all week, not play Roby in this game and wait a whole other week to play to the next game. I, I don't think so. I think if they don't have Roby in, I'll be kind of surprised, you know, like seriously. Yeah, I mean, he's played the position his his whole career. So at this point, hope he plays well. And I, I just I just can't see him not starting in this game. If he doesn't, then, man, they really want to rest Roby and, and let him learn for another week, I guess, if that's where they kind of want to go. Um, you know, Fletcher Cox being out is a big one here with Marlon uh, Tupalutu out. So you're down two defensive tackles. So um, who gets to start next to Jalen? Uh, who gets to start next to Jalen Carter? Um, I don't know. I mean, is it going to be Milton Williams? You know, I know they're going to bring up Mauro Ojomo to the active roster, most likely. Um, you know, so not sure what's going to happen there. If it was up to me right now, which I think they should do, I think Carter just needs more playing time because he's really not getting that much playing time. He's so disruptive and he's doing so well in the rotation. Even, you know, I, you know what I mean? So I feel like there's just a lot more there you can you can really do. I, somebody is going to have to get more snaps. I wouldn't say that Jalen Carr is going to play next to Jordan Davis, but he could in both lines. You know, I think Jalen Carter could get more reps on both uh, rotations and then kind of maybe get some backups in there and then bring Jalen Carter back. You know, you don't want to play him too much, but you want to rest him up a little bit. Um, I think he should have more reps and I think it should happen. Um, he rarely gets gets to play next to Jordan Davis at all, and I think that would be masterful 
You got to get pressure on Matt Stafford this week. Matt Stafford is dealing with a hip a pointer injury. Um, so, you know, not going to affect his throwing or anything, but, you know, Matt Stafford's going to take some shots. He's not the most athletic guy like he used, you know, really used to be or really is, to be honest with you. Um, we know the Rams have really not lost, you know, seven or less points the last three weeks. You know, they, they beat Seattle. They won against three teams, seven or less. They only lost by a touchdown, um, you know, against the Ram, uh, against, sorry, the 49ers. Uh, so, you know, they, you know, teams haven't really scored on them too much. You know, they haven't lost by a lot of points. I think this is going to be the toughest team that they face because I don't think the 49ers are playing great, fantastic football as everyone thinks they are, you know, but, um, you know, just going into, you know, the defensive line, could Davia Street and Milton Williams could be taking that spot up front next to uh, next to Jalen Carter or Carter's going to stay in and they move, maybe move Jordan Davis up. I think Carter should just have more reps. Simple as that. So we'll see what happens at the defensive tackle position. And lastly, Sean Desai, Ben don't break. Uh, I've been talking about this this past week with this Ben don't break defense. The Eagles are ranked 18th in total defense. The Eagles are ranked 27th against the pass, which is really bad. Statistically, we're making quarterbacks really good right now, keeping that underneath route wide open. Um, I hate the Ben don't break. I can't stand it. I'm just tired of it. Um, I, I've never seen a team play off the ball so much. And guys, to be honest with you, because I don't sugarcoat anything, this isn't going to last. I feel like the Eagles are going to lose a game because of this defense, not because we're not getting pressure, not because you're not trying to generate a pass rush. Why are you paying Darius Slay? Why are you paying James Bradbury to a new contract to do what they're supposed to do? You're literally taking the one thing is what they're getting paid for is to cover, not to cover after eight, nine yards. <laughs> OK, it's like it's like paying a quarterback and telling him not to, and he's not throwing the football you, like that's 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 where I'm kind of into all this right now. And it's very annoying. And. We're, the next couple of weeks are going to be kind of nuts because you have the Rams on Sunday and then you have Zach Wilson, the Jets. If they make Zach Wilson look good with over 320 or 330 passing yards and three touchdowns, it, it's really going to piss me off like beyond. I don't want the Eagles to lose a game and then try to fix their mistakes. I don't want to t them to take a loss to fix their mistakes. I want them to, I mean, us fans, like, we're not there. We're not coaching these guys, but we're not stupid either. We know that they're playing off the ball way too much. Darius Slay, in his podcast on YouTube a couple days ago, a few days ago, has said that they're not giving up the big play, so I understand that. So, which makes... It more open is when you're playing eight to 10 yards off the ball with these cornerbacks and you're blitzing linebackers and that middle is wide open. You know, that's where they're getting huge chunk yards and you're, you know what I mean? So what's the sense of even blitzing linebackers, moving corners back wide open middle space for big chunk yards for these receivers and tight ends. I just, I just don't get it. I, I don't. And I don't want them to lose a game. And like because of a loss, they're going to change. We, we know they have to adjust. There's really not much that needs to be fixed, to be honest with you. There's not much. Defensively, they, they just have to move up these corners and play a little physical. Yeah, like, why are you paying two cornerbacks for... <laughs> to cover like that's just why you pay that's why cornerbacks one of the high price positions because you know when you pay a corner that's that's what they're supposed to do I just I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around it I don't think Sean Desai I, I don't know if he's afraid or what happened to this defense being felt and violent and you know putting pressure on quarterback like he's putting too much on these front four they're going to be gassed they're going to be tired you're putting too much into your offense you're giving, you're putting pressure on your offense to score points every single time. And our offense has, you know, been getting better, but it's still not playing up to par right now. The offense is the last thing I'm thinking about in this game. I think the Eagles can score points offensively. I think uh, AJ Brown's going to have, um, is going to have a uh, is going to have a huge game this week, um, just because I think one of their corners. I mean, AJ Brown demolished him last year when he was a Pittsburgh Steeler, then had a hamstring injury. The rest, Akello, whatever his name is, um, I think it's another big game. 
uh, for A.J. Brown. Dallas Goddard needs to be involved. Wide receiver three is going to be interesting. What happens there with Quez coming back? Um, so really offensively, I'm not really complaining about too much going into this week. We know what they have to fix offensively, but it's all fixable. Like I said, defensively, the, the, the bend don't break is a huge problem. You should be playing off cover, off the ball like that if you're facing like Tyree Kill or if you're in a third and 25 situation or there's five seconds left and they're at the Eagles 48 and they have to score a touchdown on one more play. That's when you should be off ball coverage like that. And I, I'm just... I feel like I'm talking stupidity to myself because there's just common sense to it, and I don't get this defensive coordinator and what he's doing. The Eagles are winning, yes, but we've been through this last year. We've been through the winning and winning and winning. Giving teams life is the worst thing you can do, and every team that we're facing is figuring this out to throw quick, short passes, and guys are wide open. And if you miss these open field tackles, what's there's no point. Do I think the Eagles are good at tackling? Mm, on occasion, at times, just depending on who gets the ball, who you're up against offensively, what wide receiver, what tight end. I mean, you you have a second half of your schedule right now that you haven't faced KC, you haven't faced the Bills, you have you I mean you haven't faced the 49ers yet. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna be facing some very good offenses, and you're gonna be playing this off the ball every you're playing off the ball to not give up the big play, but putting pressure on your offense to get more points. So if your offense is up by three touchdowns, kind of like what the Bears did to Washington the other night, and what they're going to do is they're going to not give up the big play and play everything underneath to waste more time on the clock, to let the offense just waste time and, and you know, and being like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to win by just that. Like I want to, Get some statistics up. It's just, I understand it's working throughout four weeks right now, but I'm telling you right now, it's not going to last. That's all I got to say. That's my little rant on it so far. Um, I know I've been going back and forth, not making any sense. And trust me, like, I, I hate making videos like this, talking about the same thing every single week. Every single week. It's the same shit. So, other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. Not much to complain about, but interesting to see the matchups with Cooper Cup, what they what they do at you know at nickel for the Eagles? I'm oh, please Bradley Roby play this week, please, please, please God. I do not want to see Josh Job on the outside for another week. I'm just not in the mood for it. Um, and I would I would it would be nice if it would be a nice comfortable game for the Eagles, but it never is because the Eagles have been fighting every single week and they're finding ways to win and that's showing characteristic building uh, with this team, which is awesome. So let me know what you guys think of the score tomorrow. What do you think? What are the Eagles doing at nickel? You know, what are the questions going into this game? Really, what do you want to see from this defense? What do you think is going to happen with this offense? Is it a big run game? Is AJ Brown going to have a big day you guys let me know uh subscribe to the channel like the like the video if you guys have it i'll see you guys on the next one shakes what up false side peace out guys peace